Okay, my brothers, sisters, and friends, we truly thank and praise God for blessing us to come back to you once again. We're coming back with part two. We didn't get a chance to finish part one on last night, so we're coming back uh, with part two. Uh, we're talking about establishing the difference between the Father and the Son, all right? And from video number one, we stopped in uh, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 6. We're going to start at verse 13, all right? Let's take our Bibles and turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning at verse 13, as we continue to talk about the difference between the Father and the Son. We have been talking about that there is a difference between the Father and the Son. We've had uh, Tommy Ingram uh, has been saying that there is only one in heaven who is Jesus Christ. All right, he does away with God the Father and makes Jesus Christ the Son and the Father and the Holy Spirit, in which he also says that there is only one in the Godhead. All right, so we'll come it against that lie. We'll come it against his false teaching. And we are showing you that there are two uh, in the Godhead, of course, plus uh, the Holy Spirit. So there are three in the Godhead, a total of three persons in the Godhead. All right, so uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning at verse 13. <clears throat> Excuse me, all right? This is what it says. All right, this is Paul addressing this letter to Timothy. And he says, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quicketh all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his time he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. All right, verse 16, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting amen all right now let's back up to verse 15 it says which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate the king of kings and lord of lords all right which in time which in times he shall who is he he is jesus christ he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. All right. Now, verse 15, verse 16 is talking about, 15 and 16 is talking about Jesus Christ is going to show us God the Father. And it tells us that God the Father dwells in light which no man can approach unto. All right, so we have already showed you how God the Father dwells in light that no man can approach unto unless he allow you to approach him. And God the Father has to make it uh, to a situation where you can see him. All right, he has to make, uh, make it a situation where you can see him so that you cannot be killed by his glory. All right, now notice in verse 16 it says, whom no man had seen. Now, this is where you have to rightly divide the word of truth. And if you don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth, uh, you will misinterpret the scripture. Now, the Bible says that no man has seen God at any time. And then here it says that whom no man had seen. Now, what it means is that no man has seen God in all of his glory. Okay? You cannot see God in all of his glory and live. No man can see God in all of his glory and live. There have been many men who have seen God, but they have never seen God in all of his glory. For no man can see God in all of his glory and live. So that's what the scripture talks about when it says no man has seen God at any time or here in verse 16 when it said, Whom no man hath seen, nor can see. You can see God, 
but you can't see him in all of his glory. And you can only see him if he allows you to see him. All right, so we see right there that there is a distinction between Jesus Christ and God the Father. All right, now let's take our Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. All right, Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. This is what it says. It says, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. All right, now let's back up to verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. All right, verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. All right, so we see this was at Jesus' baptism. And Jesus, Jesus was the one or the agent who was being baptized. So that's one. All right. And uh, when he was baptized, he came straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is Jesus, is uh, the Holy Spirit. That's two. That's the second agent. All right. And verse 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. All right, that's the third agent, God the Father. So we see all three of them are at Jesus' baptism. All right, so those are the three that bear record in heaven. So we see there is a distinction again, again between the Father and the Son. And we heard God the Father speaking from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Now Tommy, uh, Tommy Ingram says that this voice from heaven is Jesus Christ, even though Jesus Christ was the one being baptized on the earth. All right, But he declares that this voice from heaven is Jesus Christ. In fact, he says that all three of them are Jesus Christ. All right, So we know that that is a lie, and he is a liar. All right, now let's take our Bibles and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. As we continue to talk about the distinction between God the Father and Jesus the Son, we know that there is a distinction between God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. Chapter 4. Verse 12. All right. What does it say? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. We hope you're turning with us in your Bibles. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. This is what it says. It says, And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. All right, let's look at verse 12 again, because what we're doing is we're distinguishing the voice of the Lord here. All right, he said, and the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. All right, out of the midst of the fire. Now, you know, we talked about the other day about how God can show up various ways. All right. In this case, he's showing, uh, he's speaking out of the midst of the fire right here. Now, we know that God is not fire. Now, we know that God is a consuming fire, but uh, when he's speaking out of the midst of the fire here, it is not God. God is not this fire, but he is speaking out of this fire. So it says, And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similar to. All right? Only ye heard a voice. So in other words, you didn't see anybody. All right? You didn't see a shape. You just heard the voice of the Lord speaking out of the fire. All right, so we see there is the voice of the Lord again, just like there was the voice of the Lord or the voice of God the Father speaking from heaven at Jesus' baptism. All right, now let's go back to, uh, let's take our Bibles and go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 12. 1 John chapter 4, verse 12, as we show you and establish for you the differences between the Father and the Son. 1 John chapter 4, verse Verse 12, 1 John chapter 4, 
verse 12. All right, this is what it says. It says, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. All right, we see in verse 12, I was just explaining to you that no man has seen God at any time. And I told you that we have to rightly divide the word of truth. We know that there have been men who have seen God. We know that Moses saw God, and other men uh, have seen God. So we have to rightly divide the word of truth, as I said before, and we have to know that this is saying that no man has seen God in all of his glory, all right, at any time. All right, now let's go to uh, Exodus 33 and 20. Exodus 33 and 20. We're showing you the difference between God the Father and Jesus the Son. We're showing you that God the Father does exist. He has his own body. He's his own person. All right. Exodus 20. I'm sorry. Exodus 33 verse 20. Exodus 33 verse 20. All right. Let's look at what it says. It says, And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. All right. You see, that just reiterates what I just said a few minutes ago. You cannot see God in all of his glory and live. All right. So God allowed Moses to see him to a degree, but he could not see God in all of his glory. All right. Now, let's take our Bibles and go to the last scriptures. And that's going to be St. John chapter 16. Verses 23 through 30. St. John chapter 16, verses 23 through 30. Glory to God. Hallelujah. St. John chapter 16, verses 23 through 30. All right. St. John chapter 16, verses 23 through 30. All right. This is what it says. And in, and in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. All right? Jesus said, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. All right? The Father is not the same as my name. All right? We're talking about two distinctive persons there we're talking about the father asking the father and who my name my name is jesus's name you know when we pray we don't pray to jesus we pray to god the father in the name of jesus see there's a distinction between god the father and jesus christ we don't go praying in the name of jesus all right but we say Father in the name of Jesus. See? We say Father in the name of Jesus. So we pray in the name of Jesus, but we first petition the Father. We say God the Father in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God is the head. God is the Father. And Jesus is the Son. All right? The Son came from the Father. All right? Let's understand that. All right? Let's look at verse 23 again. And in that day ye shall, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. All right, verse 24. Hitherto, and that word hitherto means unto, unto now or until now. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Until now have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. All right, verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. All right, Jesus said the time, he said I've been speaking to you in Proverbs. He said, but the time is going to come when I will no longer show you in Proverbs, he said, but I will show you plainly of the Father. I'm going to show you the Father. All right. You see, I'm not the Father, but I'm going to show you the Father. All right. Look at verse 26. 
At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I shall say not unto you that I would pray the Father for you. All right, let's look at verse 26 again. He said, ask, he said, At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I would pray the Father for you. All right, verse 27. For the Father himself loveth you because he hath loved me and have believed that I came out from God. All right, let's look at verse 27 again. It says, for the Father himself. So you see again, the Father is himself. The Father is his own person. He's himself. Jesus declares right here, the Father is himself. He's his own person. He says, for the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. So Jesus said, you believe that I came out from God. Well, how did Jesus come out from God? Well, remember, God the Father spoke the Word, all right? He spoke the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, all right? God the Father spoke the Word, and the Word created, all right? And then the Word was made flesh, all right? So the Word came out from God. And so this is what Jesus is saying here. He said, you believe that I came out from God. Why? Because I am the word that was made flesh. All right. I am the word that was made flesh and I came out from God. All right. Now, let's keep reading. Verse 28. I came forth from the father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Now this is as plain as day. This is as plain as day. And this is why we can't let anybody come along and deceive us to believe that Jesus is the Father. Jesus is not the Father. All right? And we're going to come back after we finish this, and we're going to come back, and we're going to prove to you that there is more than one Father. All right? Tommy Ingram has said that there is only one father, and that's Jesus. We're going to come back to you and prove to you that there are two fathers, all right? There are two everlasting fathers, all right? Now, he says in verse 28, I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the, I leave the world and go to the Father. I leave the world, I, Jesus Christ, leave the world, and I go to the Father. I can't be the Father and go to the Father, but I can be the Son and go to the Father. All right? Verse 29, His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speaketh thou plainly, and speaketh no proverbs. Verse 30, Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. All right? We believe, Jesus, that you came forth from God the Father. You didn't come here on your own, Jesus. You came forth from God the Father. This is as plain as day. All right? All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, we thank and praise God for allowing us to come back to present to you part two of establishing the difference between the Father and the Son. And we'll be right back. God bless. Bye-bye.